A very interesting story just came out of England about American women and firearms. We need to check this out. Quite interesting stuff. You see, this was an article published by The Guardian, which is certainly not part of the vast right-wing conspiracy. And yet in their article discussing women that like to go jogging at all hours of the night, how they protect themselves. Turns out guns are popular with women joggers. Stay tuned. Let's talk about that. Hey folks, I'm Mark Smith, host of the Four Boxes Diner, best-selling author, constitutional attorney, member of the United States Supreme Court Bar, and proud American gun owner. If you haven't subscribed to the Four Boxes Diner Second Amendment channel, please do so and show your love for the right to keep and bear arms. Very interesting story. So the Guardian out of the United Kingdom wrote an article about women joggers, and here's the title of it. For United States women who run, jog, fear of assault is shockingly common, but the solution remains unclear. Haha, <laughs> the solution means remains unclear. Well, the reason why this article came about is because you probably heard a few weeks ago of the daughter of, I believe, a billionaire was murdered. Uh, I, she was an elementary school teacher. She was jogging at 4, 4.30 in the morning, I believe in Memphis, Tennessee. She was kidnapped, abducted, and murdered. Terrible story. But again, my first question was, hey, why are you jogging at 4 in the morning anywhere and anywhere? But set that issue aside, why wasn't she carrying a gun or something like that? Remember, this was a wife and a mother of two, I believe. So it was very perplexing as to why that happened. But the Guardian decided to do a story on women who run, pointing out that many women who run get harassed and are threatened and risk being, you know, victims of violence, which kind of makes sense because we know there's a lot of scumbags out there and predators out there that want to victimize women. They want to victimize everyone, but they certainly want to victimize women in particular because as a general matter, most women are much smaller than average men. It's just sort of the way genetics works, right? Now, in this article from The Guardian, there's two very interesting anecdotes, which I'm going to tie in to the National Firearms Survey that we've talked about for many, many, many months by Georgetown professor William English. And this also illustrates the point I've made to you before, that you, when you read random stories, when you read random books, can often uncover facts and information that can help the Second Amendment movement. You can stumble across them. Here's a little bit of an example. Because in this article about women joggers in the United States by The Guardian, they interviewed two American women, both of whom, by the way, carry guns when they go jogging in public. The first is, she goes by the name Jamie. She's a 40-year-old runner. She didn't want her last name revealed for privacy purposes. I totally understand this. And what's very interesting is what she said. She basically says that she, you know, people in the press call women with guns to be right-wing and crazy people. And she said she's neither of them. This is Jamie's specific quote about carrying a gun as a woman in the United States. Quote, women who carry while running are not monolithic. But we are often characterized as such in the media. Surprise, surprise. We are characterized as right-wing, aggressive, backwards thinking, and ignorant of the risks of gun ownership. I am none of these. I am educated, politically moderate, and sane. Very interesting that Jamie, who carries a gun while jogging, gave that quote to The Guardian, which makes a lot of sense. Because I think that if you're going to go jogging in public as a woman or as anybody, really, you need to be considering self-defense. But I think what's even more interesting about Jamie is why she began to start carrying guns. Why she started carrying guns when she went jogging. And she tells a story of this one time where she was followed around a popular lake trail by a man who had exposed himself to her. About a half mile later, she realized that he was right behind her, running up behind her, thinking that they were now alone because they were alone at the time. So what did Jamie do? Well, Jamie turned around and showed her firearm to the man, basically saying, I think you got to move on because she put her hand on the gun, disclosing the gun. She didn't pull the trigger. She didn't shoot. She simply revealed the handgun. He politely said, Oh, stay safe, have a nice day, and jogged away. Very interesting. Now, this is important because if you remember in the National Firearms Survey that shows there's almost one point, well, there's about 1.67 million defensive uses of firearms every year in the United States, where 82%, and this is a critical fact you need to remember, 
82% of defensive gun uses in the United States every year do not involve firing a shot. So the story by Jamie being pursued by this potential molester, potential rapist who had already exposed himself to her and then ran away when she displayed her concealed handgun, which was no longer concealed when she displayed it, this is an example of a defensive gun use that did not require anyone getting shot, anyone getting hurt, simply the gun being displayed to the potential bad guy was enough to deter any further bad conduct by the potential predator. Key point, this is what Bill English wrote about, 82% of the 1.67 million defensive gun uses do not require firing a shot. This story by Jamie in The Guardian in the United Kingdom about American runners helps prove the point with a story that goes into the Bill English statistic. But let's move on. There's another example of women carrying guns here in this article that I think is very important. It's Amy Robbins, who's a runner from Dallas. Now, what Amy says is that she began carrying guns after, this is a key, after she was followed and verbally harassed by a van full of men in 2015. So Amy Robbins said that she was threatened, felt threatened, presumably, by a van full of men who harassed her and after she was harassed by this van full of men, she started to carry a gun. And that's good for Amy. I'm glad she is. I think that makes a lot of sense. But this is important, and I want you to keep this in mind. Remember, very important, there's, there, there's an old saying, but I want you to remember it. Dumb people do not learn from their own mistakes. Smart people learn from their own mistakes. Wise people learn from from the mistakes of others. My point with respect to Amy Robbins now carrying a gun to protect herself while she goes jogging is this, that she had to experience being harassed and threatened by a van full of men before she realized that she should have carried a gun. Now, she locked out because that van full of men had the potential to do very bad things to her and even kill her which means she would not have had a second chance to decide to start to carry a gun. So, of course, this is why a reason why people like me talk about things like this, not just here on this channel, but at lectures and events across America. I do it on Fox News. I do it on the radio, on and on and on. It's because I want people to learn from me and to learn from the mistakes of other people because I want them to be wise and I don't want them to make the same mistakes because sometimes, like the jogger in Tennessee a few weeks ago, she made the mistake of jogging at 4, 4.30 in the morning in Memphis, Tennessee. She did not have a handgun. It doesn't appear as if she had any means of self-defense. She encounters a predator and guess what? She is kidnapped, abducted, and murdered. She doesn't get a second chance to carry a gun the next go around. It's too late for her. And we don't, and I'm glad Amy Robbins uh, figured it out and is protecting herself now, but we don't want people that we know and love to make mistakes because sometimes the first mistake is your last mistake and we don't want that to occur. I should also mention that Amy Robbins took her experience to the next level. She actually founded a company that provides for concealed carry and athletic wear together. Specifically, it's a company called Alexo Athletica, which is a company that designs shorts and tights for concealed carry. Um, very interesting. I'm not aware of the company Alexo Athletica, but they're out there, and it was founded by Amy Robbins, uh, who is the subject of that story I just told about the van full of men, and now she carries a gun when she goes jogging. Good for Amy. The only other point I want to make this about this Guardian article is an anti-gun professor that was quoted in here. His name is David Hemingway. He's a PhD and a professor of health policy at the Harvard Chan School of Public Health. Now, Professor Hemingway does not recommend guns for self-defense. He thinks they're, frankly, too dangerous uh, to be used for these sorts of things. Uh, he specifically recommends that bear spray, mace, or pepper spray is much safer and just as effective as a gun. Now, we know the absurdity of that because if pepper spray and mace and bear spray is just as effective as a gun, then why do the NYPD officers in New York City's Times Square carry AR-15 style guns, probably with a select fire, by the way. So why do all the police officers in America carry guns and not just bear spray? Because of course we know that it's simply not as effective as a firearm. Because if it were, well, the police and the military would just be carrying bear spray and not firearms, and obviously they don't. To summarize, here's a great article in The Guardian talking about the importance of women joggers carrying guns in the United States. They have some people that disagree with it, but the arguments on the other side aren't very compelling. The arguments for guns carrying 
by women uh, jogging are much more compelling, even though it's a British paper. So um, you may want to check it out. I'll put a link to it down below. So anyway, uh, I hope you've learned a little bit something here at the Four Boxes Diner. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. We'll see you again soon here at the Four Boxes Diner. Orders up. Table 2A.